Okay, this lecture is going to cover the topic of blood. So blood is considered to be a connective tissue. If you think about it, that makes sense, right? Because blood is circulating throughout your body, so it's connecting all the different systems, organs, everything else in your body to each other. Now most of blood is plasma, and plasma, of course, is a liquid that has a bunch of dissolved substances in it. Why would it be a liquid? Hopefully you had a second to think about it and you came to the conclusion it would be a liquid so it can flow through your body, right? Because blood's got to be able to circulate. So it needs to be a liquid to flow. Can you imagine if the whole, like blood as a whole was solid, it wouldn't move as easily through your veins. Now there are other components of blood. What you think of your blood cells, you've got red blood cells, which are also known as erythrocytes, white blood cells, which are called leukocytes, and platelets, which are known as thrombocytes. Now, as we mentioned before, plasma is mostly a liquid, right? Obviously, um, if you think about it, the main liquid that is in plasma is water. Because the majority of your body is made of water anyway. And there are two major components of plasma aside from the liquid. Um, those are gamma globulins, which are types of antibodies, and then fibrinogen. We'll come back to fibrinogen later when we start talking about the process of blood clotting. Um, but fibrinogen is converted into something called fibrin, which is actually what does the clotting. All right, now red blood cells, as I mentioned before, also known as erythrocytes, are kind of donut shaped. You can see in that picture there. Now they don't have a big hole through the center like donuts do, but they sort of have that like indentation that kind of gives it that appearance. Now red blood cells do not have a nucleus, um, but they do contain a structure called hemoglobin. And this is a protein that's found in the red blood cells, and it is the protein that actually carries the iron and the oxygen and the carbon dioxide in the blood. Um, red blood cells live about 120 days and you know kind of produced throughout your body do you know where they're made hopefully you remember back to when we talked about the skeletal system red blood cells are produced in your red bone marrow okay now white blood cells also known as leukocytes are also a component of your blood if you look in the picture you can see they're a little bit larger than the red blood cells. Diameter might not be too different, but they're more spherical in shape as opposed to that flat sort of donut shape. Um, and they do ha contain a nucleus, which is different than the red blood cells. Now, of course, they're found in your blood. They're also found in lymph glands and tissues and things like that. Um, it's your lymph nodes where these white blood cells are actually produced um, so they can go and fight infection in your body and things like that. And that's why they're increased numbers when you have some sort of infection disease. It could be something as simple as a little cold or allergies um, to things that are more complicated. Now there are five major types of white blood cells that we're going to be going over. Um, on this slide we have three listed. The first one is called a neutrophil. And these are specified to fight bacterial infections. Um, now the death of a lot of these neutrophils in one area results in pus. And so what makes me think of this or what comes the best analogy that comes to my mind, for example, excuse me, not analogy, is um, a zit, right? That's a bacterial infection it gets clogged up in your pores, right? So the neutrophils go there to kind of clean out the bacteria. And as they kill off the bacteria and die themselves and stuff, they get cleaned up and they turn into pus, which becomes the we have a little white head that we're familiar with when it comes to zits. Basophil is another type. This kind of fights allergies. And they release something called histamine, which causes inflammation in the area. So if you're familiar with commercials for things that are antihistamines, right, they're trying to go against this histamine that the basophil is releasing and get rid of that inflammation so you can breathe better. And then the final one is eosinophil, and these fight parasitic infections, things like malaria, um, other parasites of that sort. Now a fourth type of white blood cell is a lymphocyte. And many of you guys might be familiar with these because when you talk about 
you know, whether a person has HIV versus full-blown AIDS, and this is something that many people are familiar with, um, it's the determination of what stage of that you're in is based on your lymphocyte count, how many you have in your body, or your body is producing normally. And um, it's a much lower, lower number of lymphocytes when you have full-blown AIDS versus HIV, sort of the initial stages of AIDS. Now, um, B cells are cells that make antibodies, um, and this is something that basically fights or destroys any type of antigen that's in your body, and antigen is a foreign substance. And the T cells kind of coordinate this. So they're out there floating around in your bloodstream, and they find these antigens, whether they're inside of another cell or just free-floating, and say, holy crap, you're not supposed to be here. And they go to the B cells and say, look what I found check it out, you need, to, you need to do something about this, you need to create an antibody to fight against this. Now the final type is a killer cell. Now typically if your cells are perfectly healthy they're kind of letting off these signals that say hey I'm healthy everything's good here. But um, when they become infected with viruses and things like that they don't release those exact same signals. They're no longer saying hey I'm healthy, hey I'm healthy. And so these killer cells will come along and find cells that have problems like that and destroy them to try to eliminate the spread of the disease or whatever's causing them to be dysfunctional. Now the fifth type of white blood cell, remember I said that there were five types, is called a monocyte. And these actually destroy neutrophils. Now if you remember back, neutrophils is also a type of white blood cell that attacks bacteria. Now you do need something to keep those in check, right? Because you have good bacteria and bad bacteria in your body. So you don't want a whole bunch of neutrophils just running free in your body killing every bit of bacteria. So you do want to make sure that they're kind of kept in check. Also remember it's the destruction of those neutrophils that releases pus. So you kind of think back to that when I was talking about the zits or you know acne, pimple. Um, it's the monocytes that come in and destroy those neutrophils that creates that pus. Um, now they do this through a process called phagocytosis, which is sort of engulfing your food. So a cell will kind of come along and wrap itself around the food or whatever it is that it's going to consume and sort of suck it into itself and make it a part of itself. Um, they also help with the presentation of antigens to T cells right kind of saying hey look what I found just like the the T cells did to the B cells earlier now here's a question do your white blood cells remember antigens that you've been exposed to before the answer to this is yes and that's how vaccines work alright now we've talked about red blood cells and white blood cells but the other type of cell that was mentioned at the very beginning of this lecture were platelets or thrombocytes now these are involved in the process of blood clotting just like the red blood cells they do not have a nucleus they're actually much smaller than red blood cells and because they're involved in the process of clotting these are the things that repair your blood vessels now this diagram sort of shows the process of blood clotting I tried to keep it fairly simple there are many steps along the way um, but I just wanted everybody to understand the basic process of it of course, it's going to start with some sort of damage to a blood vessel, um, which, you know, of course, then the blood is no longer contained within the blood vessel. It's leaking out. And so you've got to fix that. And so there's a series of different reactions that happen in your body. Like I say, we're kind of keeping it vague. But these, all these reactions, in the long run, result in the production of something called thrombin. You can kind of help remember this because we're talking about platelets which are involved in blood clotting the other name for platelets are thrombocytes and lo and behold you have a series of reactions that result in the production of something called thrombin now this thrombin will take that fibrinogen which is just floating around in your blood remember when we were talking about the co components of plasma we said that fibrinogen was in there and we would get to how it was involved in blood clotting so when your body makes this thrombin, it actually converts the fibrinogen that's already present there in your bloodstream into something called fibrin. And that fibrin is insoluble. It will sit there and just stack up and build, you know, rebuild that that wall to the blood vessel, repair that damage that's been been made.
And that's essentially how blood clotting works.